Hey everyone, I'm Brad and this is Trail Recon. And today I wanna to share with you 10 tips for joining up with an off-road club for the first time. You know, going out wheeling by yourself is never really a good idea. But joining up with a club, man, that can be such an awesome experience. You can meet some cool people and you can learn some new off-road skills and you can just go out and have a good time. There's lots of good clubs out there. So you wanna choose one that's well organized, that does a lot of pre-planning, that does actually a pre-run and post descriptions of the trail difficulty and what some of the requirements of the vehicle that you need to have. Those are really important things that a well-organized club will do. Now, let me tell you my 10 tips for you. Okay, so admittedly, maybe it's the military in me, but arriving early is really important. You know, if you arrive on time, you're late. And if you arrive early, you're on time. There's lots to be done before they actually hit the trail with a club. And so things like being there present for the driver's meeting and getting all the information that they're gonna put out is really essential. And then having time to disconnect your sway bars and lowering your tire pressure, if that's something you're gonna do, you wanna make sure you plan ahead for that time. And also, you just wanna go out and meet the folks before you hit the trail, man, shake some hands, and introduce yourself and let them know you're new at the club. It's always great meeting new people. It's really good idea to know in advance what kind of comms the club is using because you know having the right communication when you're in a big group can really be important to make sure everybody knows what's going on. You know, you want to know what maybe the next obstacle is coming up or if you're having a mechanical issue or somebody else needs to communicate something to you, it's really important to make sure that you have some comms. Now I know in our club we've got several jokers that get on there and keep things entertaining and plus folks are always usually telling us a little bit about the history of the area or the trail. So just being able to communicate makes you more or a part of the club it's really a great experience now walkie talkies people don't really use those anymore guys because the range on them is so short they're just not reliable cbs are pretty common and that's really a good resource to have and you can buy an inexpensive handheld cb radio and i'll leave a link in the description you can go check one of those out you don't have to have a built-in one although you will get better reception with that ham radios are something that clubs are using a lot of now because the range is so much further you don't have to have a license to monitor on a ham radio, although you have to have it to transmit. So getting a little handheld ham radio can be very beneficial. You know, you can use it in an emergency if you need to, but just being able to hear what's going on can be very valuable. You know, most guys in a club will bring all kinds of stuff, so you don't really need to have every single little essential, although it is important to make sure you're outfitting your rig properly. But if you're going out there for the first time, don't feel like you need to break the bank. You know, having some basic stuff like some just hand tools, a good tow strap, uh, a first aid kit, a shovel, and an air compressor so you can air up at the end of the day, those are good places to start. But I'm telling you, usually with the club, somebody's gonna help you out if you need something. Having some good recovery points on your vehicle is really important. You know, you never know when you're gonna get stuck or you're gonna need help over an obstacle, but you also might be in a situation where you have to help out the person behind you or the person in front of you. And so having some good recovery points that are hard mounted on your vehicle are really important. You know, a lot of vehicles come with manufactured installed recovery points and those are good to use but you can buy some modified ones and there's also some other options out there you can do like a trailer hitch one and those kind of things you just want to make sure that you've got some good solid mounting points so you can do some safe recoveries either for yourself or for someone else you know, the logistics of running a big off-road club can sometimes be tough. And you wanna make sure that you're not slowing them down. So you wanna make sure you keep up with the person in front of you. You know, don't be stopping just randomly to take pictures and then wondering, why did that guy stop? Keep up with that person, and not to the point where you're tailgating, but at least keep them in your sights. And for the person behind you, man, it's really important. It's almost a safety feature to make sure that you can see them. If you can't see them, you wanna slow down and make sure you can because you don't know if there was something that they had mechanically or there was a safety issue, they got stuck in an obstacle. That way, everybody can kind of keep together if you just keep the person behind you in your rear view mirror. And you know, for me, you never wanna leave a man behind. All right, another important thing is when you come to a steep incline or a steep decline, you don't wanna just follow right up. You wanna make sure that you're giving folks plenty of room. If this person in front of you, wait until they crest the top of that hill before you start making your climb up. You know, there could be some loose ground or somebody could have a brake issue. And the last thing you wanna have happen is if you're climbing, the person in front of you falls back or you going down in a decline, actually crash into somebody else. You don't wanna have that collision on there, so it's really just a good safety feature, going up an obstacle, going down an obstacle, wait until that person clears it. 
You know, we've all been new off-roaders at one point in time. And so asking for help is not a bad thing. You shouldn't be ashamed of it. You know, if there's an obstacle ahead and you'd prefer to have a spotter, man, it's good just to get on the radio and ask for that help. It, nobody minds. I never mind hopping out of my rig and helping somebody through an obstacle. It's actually just part of the adventure for me. You know, it's okay to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask for help. More often than not, something happens on the trail that really wasn't planned. You know, whether it was somebody had a breakdown or we had to slow down because of an obstacle that we weren't really expecting, or, you know, maybe somebody took a wrong turn or there was a trail detour that we had to take. You never know what's gonna happen out there. And so you just gotta be in the right mindset to know, you know what, maybe I was planning on being out of here at three o'clock, but that may just not happen. Sometimes the trail run's gonna go longer than you maybe planned, and you just gotta be ready for the unexpected. And for me personally, that's just part of the adventure. We're thankful to have a whole lot of places that we can go off-roading and we want to be responsible with that and not go off onto the wilderness and start tearing things up that are off the trail and doing donuts out there. We want to stay on the trail and make sure that we're practicing tread lightly. And you know, it's also important to pack in and pack out what you bring. Don't leave trash on the trail. I can't stand it when I'm out on the trail and somebody's got a bunch of water bottles and food wrappers laying around. You know, there's really no excuse for that. Tread lightly, pack it in, pack it out. You know, with just about anything in life, having a positive attitude can make your experience and the experience of folks around you so much more enjoyable. You know, you really just want to enjoy the day, embrace the challenges, and experience the adventure with a positive outlook. It's always more fun that way. And man, get out there, don't be an introvert, and shake some hands and introduce yourself to the folks in the club because that will make your outlook on everything so much more enjoyable. And I always love meeting new folks that come out with the club. Joining an off-road club can be really rewarding and you're gonna meet some like-minded folks that's just gonna make your experience off-road so much more enjoyable. Now, it may take a little work. Go search the internet or visit some forums or check out some social media sites to find the right clubs that's best for you. And even, don't be afraid to visit a couple different clubs and see which one kind of fits your, your genre. There's a lot of great clubs out there, guys. Hey, if you've got some other comments about joining a club for the first time, throw them down there. I'd love to hear about it. And if you're visiting Trail Recon for the first time, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you as a member of the Trail Recon team. Thanks for watching.